Hello friends, this is Ralph and in today's video I'm talking about connectivity issues that may arise when making a CV gate connection from an external sequencer, synthesizer or keyboard controller to the Behringer 2600, the ARP 2600 or any other 2600 Sync clone. So stay tuned. Every now and then I'm still receiving comments and messages on my various social media channels that some users are running into difficulties when making a CV gate connection to the 2600 synthesizer. Usually the cause of the problem is an external gate signal that is not strong enough to trigger the envelopes. This video will show you how to rectify this problem. If you need to learn the basics about how to establish a CV gate connection with a Behringer 2600 synthesizer, then kindly watch my beginner tutorials. The video links are provided in the video description below. Before we go ahead, I would like to make one thing clear. Always go for a MIDI connection first when you just want to play notes on the 2600 synthesizer. This will make things a lot easier. For instance, the Behringer 2600 features 5-pin DIN MIDI ports and also USB MIDI. This gives you plenty of options when connecting a contemporary sequencer, synthesizer or keyboard controller to the Behringer 2600 or another modern 2600 synth clone, which usually features MIDI ports as well. When you establish a MIDI connection, then please make sure that you set the MIDI channel numbers correctly, because this is a common pitfall that many beginners are usually struggling with. So when do you go for a CV gate connection? When your external synthesizer or keyboard controller has no MIDI ports, but only CV and gate outputs that operate on one volt per octave and a positive V trigger gate signal, like my classic Oberheim OB1 synthesizer for instance. There are also classic synthesizers that operate on Hertz per volt and an S trigger, but you cannot connect them directly to the 2600 synth. Instead, you have to go through some kind of interface or converter to do that. Back to the 2600, finally, if you have an original ARP 2600, then you have no choice but to go for a CV gate connection, because the original ARP 2600 doesn't come with any MIDI ports. In today's tutorial, we are using the Arturia Microbrute to demonstrate how to rectify a gate signal that is not strong enough to trigger the 2600 envelopes. Before we go ahead, it might be a good time now to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so yet. By subscribing, you will stay updated with my latest video uploads and help me grow my channel. Your support would be highly appreciated. Thanks a lot. Now and with that out of the way, let's jump over to the Behringer 2600 Grey Mini and the Arturia Microbrute. Here is the Behringer 2600 Grey Mini and here is the Arturia Microbrute. I have already connected the pitch out of the Arturia Microbrute with the three oscillators here on the Behringer Grey Mini. The output volume of the Microbrute is turned down for the moment, so you will hear only the Behringer Grey Mini. If you don't know how to make a CV gate connection to these oscillators, then kindly watch my tutorials which explain this procedure in detail. The video links are provided in the video description below. The pitch out of the microbrute may be labeled CV out on other synthesizers, which means that this output sends a 1 volt per octave control voltage to control the pitch of these three oscillators here. To demonstrate this, I open up the filter and open initial gain. Then I play some keys here on the microbrute. And you can hear how the pitch of the Behringer 2600 VCOs 
is changing. Okay, and now in the next step, we want the gate output of the Arturia microbrood to trigger the envelopes of the Behringer 2600 Grey Mini. For this, I take the gate output signal, it's this cable here, the gate output signal from the Arturia microbrood and plug it here into the sample and hold clock input. So I move this switch downward and now I start playing some keys here on the Arturia microbrood and nothing is happening. So, why is that? Actually, the gate out from the Arturia microbrood is supposed to trigger the gray mini envelopes here. But apparently, this is not the case. The gate signal coming from the microbrood is not strong enough, and we are going to rectify this problem by making use of the preamp module of the Behringer 2600 gray mini. So, I move this switch upward again, because if I don't move this switch upward, then the sample and hold module would trigger the envelopes. And that's something that we don't want to do at the moment. If you want to learn more about the sample and hold section of the Behringer 2600, then kindly watch my sample and hold tutorial. The video link is provided in the video description below. So, now we take this cable here, which carries the gate output of the Arturia microbrood and plug it here into the input slot of the preamp module. So please make sure that the range slider is at the X10 position and the gain slider is all the way down. This is the lowest setting. It's always a good practice to start with the lowest setting and work your way upward from there. So now we take another cable, this here, we plug it into the preamp output and run it again into the sample and hold clock input. Now we move this switch downward again and I start playing some keys here on the Arturia microbrood. Still, there is nothing happening. But as I move the gain slider upward, you can hear that the microbrood keyboard slash gate is triggering the envelopes. Now let's bring in the microbrood as well. Let's start the sequencer. Let's add some reverb. And a bit delay. So the takeaway from this video is, first, go for the MIDI connection if you just want to play notes and if your individual hardware setup allows for it. Make sure you set the MIDI channel numbers correctly. Two, 
If the gate signal of your external hardware is not strong enough to trigger the envelopes of the 2600, then make use of the preamp section to boost the gate signal. Start with the lowest preamp setting and proceed cautiously from there. If you have some CB gate connection experience with your specific hardware, connecting it to the Behringer 2600, ARP 2600 or another 2600 clone, then kindly share your knowledge here with the community by leaving a comment below. Please let other users learn from your experience and knowledge. All right, friends, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again in my next video. Until then, Take care, stay safe, peace.